for nearly 15 years, um, selected in Whitefield. Um, Elaine, Elaine was quickly behind me and yeah, he joined us a few years ago. So I'm um, going to propose that we go around the room and do introductions. Uh, as Laurel said, I'm Candace Linehan. I was appointed in 2019, um, and I was elected again this past year. Uh, I'm a family nurse practitioner at East Boston, uh, and I'm also the public health, excuse me, the uh, public school health consultant for Wakefield Public Schools. Um, I have two kids. I lived in Wakefield for about five years. Um, Elaine Silva, retired health director from Everett, was the interim director here for a while, filled in until Anthony's application came in and I said, that looks good to me. <laughs> um, and I've been on the Board of Health now for what, 14, 13, 12 years, right after Laurel. Um, 14 and seven months. Is it? <laughs> you can't <laughs> believe that. I am officially retired on paper, but I do teach one day a week at uh, Middlesex Community. I teach public health nursing to senior nursing students. Married, have a cloth, fireman, everybody, nurses. <laughs> my, my kids house. left them yesterday. My Did kids they? were at the public safety building. They, oh. they met the firefighters and the police officers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not the best one of them. yeah, that's it. We have a very weird house on holidays because nobody knows who's going to show up. Yeah. 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 And it's nice to meet all of you. <laughs> So my name is Lillian Yadgu Kelly. I'm a registered nurse that sits on the city of Melrose Board of Health. I was appointed two years ago, three years ago. <laughs> Do up a thing for a reappointment. Um, I'm actively still working. I shouldn't be, but I'm an idiot. And so I'm working in Boston on a perioperative uh, surgical services um, nurse manager and uh, in quite a busy environment still. Commuting in and out of Boston is no fun. I can appreciate the comment about who showed up for dinner. <laughs> haven't been, I haven't been on call forever and married to a firefighter as well. Um, so I understand that. And I'm uh, happy to meet you all. I'm Jenny and Carol Olaf and put this on with my second term. There's a lot of this for officially retired, <laughs> but I work part time for the executive office. Oh, and I'm training. I was director training for DMH before I was in this role. But and, and in, in, in Stoneham, I've been involved with the Stoneham Coalition for Safety Public Community. So I'm the chair of the board of that organization, too. So a lot of connections here, a lot of overlap. Um, you know, so it's, it's I need to be on the board and sort of be able to connect a little bit more with policy. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Jean. Um, I think in my 10th year in the board of health. I'm a former public health nurse for the town of Stoneham for a number of years. Former professor of Mass College of Pharmacy in the School of Nursing, and right now I'm the director of case management for children's um, in Boston, where I started my nursing practice 35 years ago. So, um, just complete my doctorate with a focus in public health. Um, that's it. Happy to be here. Denise Green, I'm the admin for the Stone and Board of Health. Been there for 23 years and hopefully another 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Scullin, uh, board member for 23 years, retired Stone Firefighter. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. My name is Katie Jarrett Sergio. Uh, tonight we'll find out what I'm going to do next public health for Stone in Massachusetts. I'm very excited. I um, finished up my last semester of my DNP at UMass Lowell. Um, I teach for UMass Lowell and I did a long stint at Mara at Vernon Women's Hospital. So, here I am with you guys tonight. I'm Christy. I'm the admin for Melrose. I've been here for like seven months. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> um, I'm Erin Carleo, I'm the Senior Environmental Health Specialist um, for all three communities. Um, so I work with um, the inspectors in each community and I handle most of the housing and environmental cases. Uh, my name is Anthony, I'm the health director for Melrose Lake Film Film. Cindy Luongo, I am the administrator's assistant for the health director for Wakefield, and I've been here 10 years. 
Rose Fennell, or I'm the part-time admin in Stonehill for the last two and a half years. Maureen Busby, Regional Tobacco Prevention Program. Sandy Brown, I'm the Assistant uh, Public Health Nurse for the Town of Wakefield, and I've been around for about a year and a half. <laughs> Melissa Lowry, I'm the Regional Public Health Nurse for all three towns, and I've been here about two and a half years. Right. You're cleaning your sweet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank Machero, who's almost uh, one of health chair, um, been on the board about 15 years and years, and went back from a family doctor to practice. Now. Okay. But Frank, you were tagged because it, you're the host. But if you want to, yeah. well, because you're wearing the Melrose. Melrose. Yeah, yeah. We were talking this. He told me this yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> But we do have um, public participation. Yeah. Should, should, we, should we explain kind of how we don't start with that item and then and then go back? Um, only one thing. What do you mean? I mean, we want to explain guidelines for public participation? Or we can just let her know that it's later in the agenda. No, let's do it now. Let's do it now? Okay. It's, that's, right. that's how it's listed. Okay. Um, so, Leslie, we see you. Just give me a second. Um, uh, so, in, in Wakefield, I don't know if this. So, the, so this is a little interesting because as we're all together, some of us probably have different guidelines and maybe our next agenda will be what are our guidelines. But um, we often have uh, public participation in Wakefield meetings before the meeting, kind of as the very first thing of the meeting. And then that's it. There's no give and take. It's, it's to bring things to our attention. The person who's on today had brought something to our attention in December in Wakefield in regards to um, how, how we relay information to the public about concerns with health inspections in restaurants. So tonight is the start of the conversation. Um, Wakefield will be taking it on in February on our own, but it, it's certainly um, applicable to all of us as we kind of try to find a cohesive path. And, and how we do things. Otherwise, we're really going to trip over each other and we don't want to drive down crazy. So, um, Leslie, you're on. Uh, you should need to get unmuted. You're muted. Well, we muted. There we go. Okay. Yeah, she's going to unmute herself. And Leslie, I'll give you, um, we can only do about three minutes because. Yeah, she needs to unmute. Sorry, guys, mute her. No, she's. Yeah, she needs to unmute. Yeah, she's asking her to unmute. No, you're still muted. She go down to her name and undo her. You just you can only ask. You can't. No, I can't force on you. Okay. Leslie, do you see your mute button on? Because it's not coming from us. See one. Okay. Finally. Finally, I think I think the both of them were on at one point. Okay, hi, I'm Leslie Scott Lyson. I'm a longtime resident of Wakefield, and um, uh, without going deeply into my background in health, I will simply say that I have done extensive patient advocacy work, both within um, the autoimmune and cancer communities. So I am a patient. I have been caregivers to patients and such, and I am a patient myself with a very serious disease. And with that, I, am, I was very dismayed to find out that a restaurant that I frequented and my family frequented had extremely severe inspection problems and had been closed up. The saddest thing about it is that I found out through Facebook and people did not know why it was closed up. But then finally the word got out. Um, my concern is that someone like myself, who for years has had to take a very, um, take charge control of my health and my family's health, was not given the information to allow me to do that. Um, I do understand Massachusetts public record law. I do understand these inspection reports are supposed to be part of the public record, but without there being proactive communication about issues, how is the public even to know that they should be delving deeper into the situation at a particular place of employment? Interesting, I provided Laurel 
the one little bit of piece of research out there about health inspections and their impact. And there is a positive impact when the public is proactively informed of these situations. One comment I got when I raised the flag very strongly about that was that you didn't, uh, the thought was not to be overly, uh, what was the word, um, strict or hard on the business for the problems. The, this situation with this business was about as bad as it gets under refrigerated food and rodents of the two things. I can't find my reports from that inspection for some reason. And I've since requested again to get copies of them, but um, it's about as brave as it can get. Um, I am very, very up to date on food practices, um, sanitation. I practice it in my home because of my immune um, suppression. And I, I feel extremely strongly that this can be the one discipline that can be me truly meaningful for a business. Threats are not, but once something, if there's a possibility of something getting public and it affects their bottom line, they're not going to kick it down the kick it down the road like evidently what was happening for many months at the bamboo house. I was very dismayed to find out that they were checked on 10 or 11 times. And interestingly, I just jumped on the local Facebook group and people still are asking what the status is of that restaurant. So okay. yeah. that was just this evening. Um, I know the Wakefield board has copies of my correspondence about the issue. I feel extremely, I'm, I'm from the point of view of transparency. I practiced communications professionally until I became disabled and that included healthcare communications. And this, we should not be protecting a truly bad player, which has been the case. Okay, Leslie, you're at three minutes. Can you, yep. are you almost I, done? It, I, in closing, there was one meal I took home on September 7th which was shortly before they finally closed and it tasted off. Lauren asked me, why didn't I report it? Because I wasn't a hundred percent sure. The first taste I took, it didn't taste right, but damn, I wasn't going to take another taste and, and really get myself sick. So um, again, this really needs a long, hard look. Thank you so much, Leslie, for your comments. Um, we're not going to address the issue tonight, but as I've told you, we will be digging into it at the next Wakefield board meeting. Um, we have a pretty heavy agenda. I also want to go forward. Um, we did not introduce the folks who are on Zoom. Is there anybody else who's here for a public comment? You're the girls. So there's yeah. staff. So since you're staff, do you want to introduce yourselves? I see Amy. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Chiravalotti. Sorry. I'm the Prevention and Wellness Coordinator for the Town of Wakefield. Dan? Can you hear me? Just barely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my name is Dan Thompson. I'm the Health Inspector for Wakefield. And who's older? Is your uh, uh, you sure, already here. Listen, yeah, you're no, right. Right. Oh, of course. <laughs> and then Deanna is... <laughs> Not in the room, right? Yeah, Deanna's. Um, okay. I don't know if you can hear us, but Deanna's um, our. Oh, there she goes. Hi, Deanna. Hi, I'm the Shared Services Coordinator for uh, Melrose, Wakefield, Dona, Medford, um, Malden, and Winchester. Okay, awesome. Thank you for joining. Okay, Frank, you ready? <laughs> yeah, what do I do? You want any agenda? Okay. <laughs> um, so, first order of business, we're going to review the Melrose Board of Health um, minutes from October 3rd and 19th. And um, we have Mm 
So who was absent for October 3rd when Carol Ann, my third board member, was not? So I hear today. So I think we have to table that until next time, unfortunately. Um, we have the notes from October 19th. So we said all three of us would be there. So, um, a motion to accept the minutes as written. Um, motion to accept minutes as written. I will second that. And that passes to zero one. Um, there's also the packet, I guess you all get the same packet, right? Mm -hmm. Of um, a lot of citizen and some. Uh, Industry input regarding um, team three generation hearing that was held on October 19th. And for those who are up here, review. Um, next up, we have the Wakefield Board of Health approval of the ministry of November 19th. Okay, good. All three of us are here. Mm -hmm. Do I have a, have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting of November 19th. I'll second that motion to accept the minutes from any November meeting. Any concerns about those? No. no. Discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. So, what? Mm -hmm. Board of Align. We're still finished. I think, I think we're still working on some of the minutes, so we'll have it in the back. Yeah. So, next on the agenda is the health director's reports. So thank you everybody. The last page of the packet might be underneath all your packets. There's a, a health records report at the very end. <clears throat> so I think this would be a good time to review um, the regional department progress. It also happens to be the one year anniversary for selling joining uh, to the two town collaborative, now with two towns. Um, it has it has been quite a it has been quite a year. Um, and it's also been a great, great two, two and a half years so far. Um, I think it's been an amazing partnership. We have a lot of uh, cross collaboration, especially in the environmental health uh, category, as well as our prevention and substance use and health areas. Um, we're able to partner with all three towns and lean on each other's strengths. Um, it has been, has been a great uh, setup. We also have uh, here tonight um, both of our public health nurses. We also have our future public health nurses, Bob well Stone. Um, but uh, we're very happy to report that this year we've been on track to meet the FDA uh, risk based schedule uh, for inspections for food um, this year. So we're, we're caught up there. We've been successfully working with many housing cases um, throughout this time. Um, what I'll probably do is take out of order, also include some of our um, success when it comes to uh, current grants as well. Um, so currently we are. We have picked up the DFC grant, the Dark Free Communities grant in Stoneham. Um, it is year six of our grant. We just hired a new grant coordinator, her name is Becca Lewis. Um, she'll be continuing to serve as the grant coordinator. Um, we'll be working with the coalition as well to make sure that we're bringing prevention and recovery efforts um, to the town. Um, we're very excited to also have the Stop School Violence um, grant, which is a regional free town grant. Um, it, is, it was a total of $3 million across uh, three years. We were able to hire one adjustment counselor uh, for each school district, and while also bringing uh, bullying prevention and other uh, initiatives to the schools. And so that's ongoing. We just entered year two of that grant, uh, and it plays well with some of our other grants as well that we're working on. Right now. Um, we continue to have the Public Health Excellence Grant, which started about a year before I started. Um, it focuses a lot on environmental health and training development, training development. And so it's a, it's a large focus on health equity, especially when it comes to inspections and working with residents. Um, there's a lot of training opportunities. We're also looking to bring on a few new positions along with that. Um, Dion is our newest uh, grant coordinator, but we're also looking to bring on an epidemiologist that will be able to serve the six communities grant. Uh, through this grant, we'll also have two new health inspector trainees um, this program has been very successful in the past in terms of training uh, inspectors. Uh, one of them now is Thomas, who is in Stone. 
Uh, and the other is Michael, who's filled our spot in, uh, in that place. Uh, we're also looking to bring a health communication specialist on board um, through the PHE grant. Um, this will look at issues such as the one we discussed tonight, um, how to communicate environmental health efforts successfully, as well as other health, uh, public health concerns. Uh, we also have, we've just wrapped up the uh, Drug-Free Communities Grant in Wakefield after 10 very successful years. Um, Catherine and Amy, who's on tonight, um, steered us really well through uh, through those 10 years and many of our programs, including Wake Up, which is our uh, substance use prevention coalition in Wakefield, um, is still ongoing and, and very strong, uh, brings together a lot of our key players in the schools, um, as well as community partners, um, you know, we also have similar partnerships in Stone Rock Boy and Girls Club and other places. So, uh, we have Drug Free Communities Grant. Um, we also have successfully applied for both in Wakefield and Melrose and received a smaller grant, a Foundation of Alcohol Prevention. Um, so both towns successfully applied and received those grants. So those will be focused on alcohol prevention education efforts um, for the town, but with a focus on youth. Um, we also have the um, we also have the MMA conference coming up. So as a summary, uh, with the support of all of the board members and all of the and all of the great staff that we have that do all this great work, um, we have been selected for the Innovation Award uh, at the Mass Medical Associations uh, Conference, which will be taking place on Friday. Um, it's a testament to all the great work that we're, that we're, pro that we're providing um, through our staff's expertise, but also their ability to work together across all three towns. It's, um, it's not new. We used to be partnered with Reading um, before my time, um, not just like Bill Reading. Um, but, you know, as part of uh, some of the principles that go along with public health and providing health services to residents, regionalization um, is an important model. And it's something that we, we, look, to, uh, we look to bring forth um, in our work. Uh, this might be a good time if we want to move to the public health nurses report. Actually, so as part of this report um, from January 1st to December 31st, so all of last calendar year, um, we were able to organize and recruit volunteers and staff for flu clinics across Melrose, Wakefield, and Stoneham. Um, we vaccinated 530 people between October, uh, oh, from uh, since October to date. That's just in Melrose. Just in Melrose. Wakefield held 16 clinics um, and home visits that total the 570 vaccinations. And in Stoneham, we were able to vaccinate about 221 uh, residents. And so looking at the landscape for flu clinics and COVID clinics moving forward, there have been a couple of factors that have been, uh, that have been at play, uh, especially this year. The pharmacies have taken, uh, taken a strong step towards offering vaccinations, and that comes along with having vouchers. Um, and incentives to come get the vaccinations there. And so this year, uh, in particular, in particular a, lot, a lot of our communities actually have a lot, a lot of leftover vaccines. So we order based on previous trends, hoping that we'll be able to you know, guess correctly how many, how many communities can be looking for. But this year in particular has been more difficult to get those because you know, despite our best efforts to get it out in the community, and I, lots of people still work closely with us and still want to get it from the health department because of the great follow-up and the education we provide, um, it's still difficult because uh, it's hard to beat a $25 coupon um, from CBS. So we'll be evaluating the trends this year, um, how many, how many uh, vaccines we end up giving ultimately at the end. Um, but it'll be important to see how much we'll be ordering next year um, to make sure that we don't go over budget. Um, this year we're um, we're excited to have Heidi be joining us. Um, Heidi takes on uh, a great legacy. Um, Peg retired this year. Um, so Heidi will be joining us. Uh, she'll be starting this, the 22nd of January. Uh, she brings a great experience and we're looking to expand a lot on our health education um, efforts in Stoneham and be able to reach a lot of our senior centers and other, and other populations. We also provided blood pressure screenings at the Milano Senior Center and at several Nova's farmers markets. Uh, about seven to ten blood pressures are taken each session, along with discussions about other health, important health topics in this diet, exercise, reducing salt intake, and increasing fluids. Wakefield has two volunteer nurses who rotate uh, weekly blood pressure screenings for 10 to 13 residents per week. And Stoneham is looking to recruit a nurse um, 
when a the partner with Heidi or student nurses to hold blood pressure screens at the Southern Senior Center. Do We've also been keeping up with communicable diseases that are reported in Maven. Um, we'll we'll include the report. In, we'll include this in the report, so I won't read all of it. But um, we we have been keeping up uh, with this. And just last week, I know um, you guys attended a TB um, TB presentation to yeah. understand the newest trends. Um, information there. And then another another piece that we've been working on uh, diligently this year are increasing our articles on various healthcare topics. And so we're looking at interest uh, topics of interest such as this year. We're looking at increase uh, season window, uh, increase window for um, ticks and tick-borne diseases as the weather stays warmer for longer. Uh, we're looking at potential. We're looking at potentially longer windows of people getting babesiosis and exposure to Lyme. <coughs> Moving forward, we're hoping that now we have a full team um, that will be able to write more of those articles and get more, you know, get more opportunities for um, engagement with the residents on different health topics. I know we had a successful, um, uh, this whole successful seminar with dark chocolate benefits, uh, <laughs> um, which was held at the senior center, which is something that we'd like to kind of you know, you know provide more widely um, to all the communities moving forward. We'll move on to the uh, food inspection reports. So we'll start with Stoneham. Stoneham is the longest. Um, we have uh, fusion. We have fusion. Um, it, was a, it was a New Year's Eve. Um, we went back for a reinspection today. Uh, we're working closely with fusion um, to make sure that they uh, that they follow the recommended guidelines we provided them. Um, they do improvement. Um, um, yeah. um, not a lot, um, but what we're looking to do, we're looking because we're going to be doing some minor renovations uh, in the beginning of the near future. Um, so we're going to do, a, we did a minor walkthrough today. We're going to look at their plan review and make sure that they have the appropriate facilities put in. Um, so when they when they reopen, they'll have, they'll have um, a good start. Uh, I'm probably saying this incorrectly, but we have a restaurant, Newton Pet, um, which is four priority, that had four priority violations. Um, concerns about rodent entry and rodent presence. Uh, we've been working with them. Thomas has done a great job kind of providing education, and, you know, what, what areas need to be corrected. Um, so that he'll be, I think he's done one reinspection, but he'll be back. We're going back Friday. He's going back Friday too. And local 438, which we had some issues with last time, we're going to be um, going back next month for reinspection. In housing, uh, we had one condemnation uh, in Stoneham since our last meeting. Uh, we're working with the resident closely to make sure that they have the resources to, uh, to get the place uh, back up to code, um, <coughs> reaching out to different resources uh, to provide them with. Was it a single family home or an apartment? Or an apartment? It was an uh, apartment. apartment. Yeah. Uh, we've been actively working with them, and they've they've been, they've been connected to the resources. Uh, and Danielle, Danielle, the police station has been a great resource. Uh, we followed up on the Redstone and CVS dumpster. Uh, the red burrows have been cleaned up and baited, uh, so that should no longer be an issue. That's the that's the property that backs up on to local four thirty eight. Um, Acorn Development, um, their dumpster permit payments are due. I believe they're they're expired. But... Yes, they. Yeah, so they've expired, so we're following up with uh, with them to make sure that they uh, pay their permits. And Palmwood Field, um, we had some. Yeah, no, some that's charge. a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Work in pro progress. But just know it's covering up like the trash, right? Anyway, yes. but we're going to have that APO do surveillance there because <clears throat> there's complaints about uh, you know, people not picking up after. <laughs> And then the long-awaited news, LA Fitness has finally been reissued a permit to open their pool. Um, that has been that has been quite a saga um, <laughs> since the beginning. It's been about six months since they, their pool was closed down, but they uh, they finally resurfaced and everything is good to go. And we're looking at uh, an increased number of pools. I believe 
in stone there's 15. Is that right? 15. Yeah, there's a lot of holes in stone. So yeah. disproportionately speaking, there's like 16 pools in stone compared to six in the Orleans or, or public, yeah. public yeah. swimming pools. Like yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. We have like, like three. Like like so um, we are, <clears throat> we have some issues. Yeah. So by five and Wakefield, six and yeah. So um semi public too. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Thomas had some trouble last year. A lot of our pools and so on weren't necessarily up to code. Um, so what we've decided to institute this year is a $25 reinspection fee. So what we're doing is we're sending out a letter very early this season saying, here's the checklist, make sure you do your own testing, make sure everything's good before you call us out to go do an inspection because it's a huge, it's a huge time suck uh, for Thomas that he has to keep going out each time to do a reinspection. Um, they're all required at the CPO. Um, so they should be doing all their testing, getting everything ready before we go out. So we're not just going out there and failing them. And then we also have want to do a review of the uh, migrant family situation. So um, some of you have heard um, about this. That's an email a little while ago, but. Essentially, um, back on back on December 9th, uh, we received a call um, from the uh, Refugee and Immigration Services uh, from Massachusetts Department of Health um, through them, and they reached out and said that there were 10 families that were uh, in need of shelter uh, on a temporary basis. And so it was um, it was a Saturday morning. Um, so we spent most of Saturday getting everybody ready, um, and we were able to spring into action. Um, Wakefield is the only town of three that has a hotel. Um, so they knew who to call, um, but they called us and they stayed at the Four Points at Sheridan. Um, so thank you to Cindy and Dan and uh, Melissa for coming out that night and Sandy. Um, but you guys came out that night to help us um, get them all into their rooms um, safely and communicate that we would be working with them throughout their time here in Wakefield. Um, and then throughout that week, we had Sandy and Jason, our social services coordinator in Wakefield, um, we worked, we worked in teams with a really great um, interpreter from cult Cross-Cultural Connections. Her name is Marie Bernard. Um, she worked with us. They were all predominantly Haitian Creole speaking. Um, so we were able to work with all of these families and provide um, clothes, food, uh, basic medical care or connection to medical care. Um, Melissa and Sandy were able to talk through some of the issues. Some of them had, you know, had symptoms that they wanted to describe. And so, you know, we ended up working with Marlowe's Wakefield Hospital. And so there's, there's a long list here. It's in the email, but I'll run through them quickly. Um, Wakefield Food Pantry, Maureen Miller, uh, Rosemary Finn from the St. Joseph Parish, uh, Trinity Church in Melrose, Eileen Dern, Karen Andrews, and Marianne Downey from Melrose Wakefield Tufts Healthcare, uh, Marie Bernard from Cross Cultural Communications, the Hotel Four Point Sheridan. Uh, Tom Walsh, our Wakefield Emergency Management Director. Karen Burke from the Wakefield Senior Center and Wake from Wakefield DPW. Um, Frank Rinchero and Candace Lenahan. Um, and Melissa, uh, for all of your help. Um, this was this was a team effort to make sure that these that these uh, that these folks felt safe, that they felt like they could tell us that they had issues, and that we could help them any way possible. Uh, it's a tough situation. Uh, the migrant uh, migrant crisis is not not just a local issue; it is a nationwide issue. Um, but the the respite that we could provide for the week, uh, the week and a half, basically, um, was important for these families. A lot of them had young children. A lot of them traveled many many miles, uh, and we didn't know, and they didn't know where the next stop would be. But um, we were able to treat them with humanity, and respect, and make sure that their basic needs were met. Um, so thank you again, especially you two, uh, for being um, consul cons consults on the phone. We're able to call you guys and ask for advice. Um, I think too, just to add to that, um, so it seems I, I think the next time we get together, maybe we could do like either we have a fabulous nursing presence, but maybe if we do try board again, we talk about how the social service aspects of how we've just really grown since COVID in that regard, because. It's the footwork of the community connection. Catherine Dingra and Jason have done a lot of footwork in just knowing who it was who would call quickly. And I think these relationships have been built over the last decade. So therefore, people were really able to 
jump in and, and kind of know how to work with each other. And I've asked Anthony if it might be prudent as a tri board to even sort of just have us um, almost, we, we've done it in the past with the Board of Health. Before I was even on the board, we did a Red Cross sheltering, um, emergency sheltering uh, uh, tabletop sort of thing. So I think it's, you know, under emergency management because emergency management has really evolved over the past 10 years. Because we pulled, you know, Anthony pulled resources fast, but I don't think we're over. And I wonder if we need to kind of put some structure and expectation and, and even call, <laughs> you know, even understanding like who's available on certain weekends when this stuff happens. I'd hate to see us get that complicated, but I worry that we might be. I don't want to keep calling staff on an emergency basis. So that's something that might apply to us going forward. Thank you. So I think um, again, this this is uh, this is the second time we've had uh, families in Wakefield. Uh, we did have some back in July, a uh, much smaller group. Um, but you know, this this is probably not over. This will probably happen again. Um, so you're right. We should probably we, we fill out all the ICS forms, make sure that we have a protocol in place. But, um, we, we need this going forward for sure. Um, before we move on to updates for nicotine-free generation uh, from Maureen, uh, I just wanted to say we are moving uh, kind of into the you know, winter, kind of winter, but we're moving to spring soon. So uh, we will be talking about camps very soon. So all the boards will hear about camp inspections moving forward really soon. Um, we have a lot of work this year ahead of us, um, but we have a full team. And I think um, after last year, we got, we got a good amount of experience. And so uh, I think we're ready to tackle this year. So we'll be having meetings to discuss camp. Uh, camp regulations pretty soon. Okay, Maureen, you're up. Um, okay, so a couple of updates before I mention um, nicotine free generation. In the past, I've mentioned the FDA is pursuing a ban on menthol cigarettes. So we don't we ban menthol in Massachusetts, but they're um, they're not banned nationwide. And also a ban on flavored cigars. That's on hold right now. The FDA passed it off to the White House, and it's just on hold in the White House. That hasn't, hasn't been signed. It doesn't affect what we do, but that's where that is. Um, also, I've mentioned the new non-menthol Newport cigarettes. And um, so um, Chelsea um, was kind of the, um, uh, the tip of the spear on this one. Chelsea Board of Health um, decided to enforce the, the flavor ban on those Newport non-menthol cigarettes. And two stores were fined. There's two stores appeal. In September, the appeal was heard by the Chelsea Board of Health. The Board of Health upheld the violations and the um, tobacco industry or whoever had 90 days to um, decide to, to appeal that. And the 90 days came and went and to most of our surprise, um, Nobody, nobody sued. So right now, um, DPH is trying to figure out if they can come up with guidelines for, for programs like, like mine and what we'll do about the Newport non-menthols that are in all our stores now. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then no decision on the uh, Brookline lawsuit, which is at the SJC level, Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts. Um, the or oral arguments were November 6th. We've got a month or two, we're January 17th, but who knows, one of the um, Supreme Court justices retired, you know, whatever, I don't know how many cases they have to hear, but no decision on that yet. Meanwhile, um, I met with the Malden Board of Health on December 20th, so just before Christmas, and the Malden Board of Health decided to move forward with a public hearing. And their public hearing is January 31st, so it's a, a Wednesday night. Um, in council chambers at City Hall in Malden. You're all welcome to attend. Um, we expect a you know, robust meeting. Um, and, and, and obviously if the SJC decision comes down in the meantime, and if it doesn't uphold the, the Brooklyn policy, the NFG policy, then we'll just cancel the meeting. If it upholds the NFG policy, then we've got, you know, we've got the momentum. The meeting is scheduled and we'll go forward. But if we don't hear anything, we go forward with the public hearing and then, then we'll just be ready like, like all of these towns who have already done a public hearing. You had the public hearing, the dust settled, we're, you know, we're in that wait mode. So, um, and then I, you know, the next 
community that um, I'll probably work with will be Medford. I've already done a presentation to Medford, but in terms of public grant, probably Medford. Um, then, you know, maybe Winchester, then Reading, or Reading, then Winchester, but just keep moving through the region so that we're all, you know, we're teed up and ready to go, assuming that the um, SJC decision is in favor of the Brooklyn, you know, the Brooklyn policy. And that's it. And any questions? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's it. Um, I'm happy to take, we're, we're all happy to take questions um, based on the report we just gave, but I just want to say one more thank you to all the board, board members uh, for all the extraordinary work you guys do. Um, you guys are all volunteers. I'm very cognizant of that. Uh, but I, I, will, I will hesitate to pick up the phone and call you guys um, when, when I have questions or when we have questions. Uh, you, guys are, you guys are great, and you guys make sure that the towns have the regulations and policies they need to be safe and healthy. So the, the, your, your, all of your work is very important. Um, and I want to say a, a great appreciation to all of the staff. Um, not all of our staff are willing to, at a moment's notice, um, help us with any issues that are going on. Um, they're very dedicated, and uh, we wouldn't be where we are right now if we had such a great team. And before everybody gets up while well, you're seated, can I just take a picture? <laughs> of so, you know, we're, trying, we're trying to do more social media and let, you know, let people know where we are, what we're up to. And we're not done. We're just taking a picture. Here we go. Laura, is it before you're done? <laughs> Great. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Can you hear this okay? Everything's okay. We don't want to share with us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so public health Yes, we, we, we not. Well, well, it's not it's on the agenda, it's not on my report, but we sort of did that already. But Heidi, I would like to give us a little bit oh, of an intro. Oh, hey, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very excited. I'm excited to be featuring this corner in my career um, before making the decision. As I said before, I started, um, I've been a nurse for 15 years now. I started off at Spalding Rehab in Boston, moved over to Brigham, uh, Longston in uh, medicine and cardiac medicine, which are both of my passion. Um, and then COVID kind of like messed up everybody's lives. So I had to be the stay home person for the kids for childcare reasons. My husband is a clinical pharmacist in Boston, so he did his work. Um, and then in the midst, I thought, hey, it's a great idea to go back to school and get my doctorate. <laughs> <laughs> she said, it's awesome. Yeah, and, and, I did that. That's my COVID project. And, and uh, it was great when things were like slowed down, but man, when you know life and activity picks up, it was been very challenging. This is my last semester. Um, my focus has been antibiotic stewardship um, in the clinical setting. I'm um, excited in the future, maybe bring in the community setting. And um, I, you know, I'm Amber down as an inpatient nurse. Um, I've seen a lot, done a lot. I still hear a lot at night. And the public health is preventative health, and I would love to contribute to that. Awesome. Thank you. Can I just add to that? Um, Heidi came to us as, as an intern yes. and she ended up working and doing a great project for Maureen on tobacco free generation. She put together a whole um, program that you could, uh, you know, online program that you could watch. And um, she helped me out with some of the hearing and vision screening. And I got to know her really well. And I've been begging her to join the team <laughs> <laughs> for at least six months. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other business? I, there's none. none. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I need my business. Well, I, you know, so so this is our opportunity as a tri board. Um, I just want to put it out there, you know, I'm we played with this a little bit a few years ago when it was Melrose, Reading, Wakefield, and we met a few times. Generally, we utilize those meetings. Um 
for kind of some common regional things. So having a riveting presentation from Middlesex and Tito, for instance. Um, but you know, thing, things that are 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 somewhat specialized apply to all our three communities. But I'm trying to figure out in whether anyone has put any thought to what do boards do when they reach one? So, so, you know, we are the policy members. The chair of each board is responsible for setting agendas. We generally do this all way, you know, we're generally fairly health inspector centric. I think during COVID, we were really careful to try to combine our meetings so we didn't exhaust our system and have the have Ruth, who was the inspector at that time, repeat herself 500 times. Like it just didn't seem necessary. So I think we really gelled during COVID because that's all we talked about. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm not quite sure. And I think it might, you know, if anyone is doing any municipal um, training or work, you know, how do we fund, you know, what do we do? Do we continue, you know, is is this model that we're just three separate boards and we continue in that regard? Or as a tri-board, are we able to, within open meeting laws, um, consider a subcommittee, which in my mind would be consistent with open meeting laws because an open meeting law, you know, you can't have a majority meeting as a subcommittee. But would it make sense for the chairs every so often or, so, or some designee have a, a subcommittee that is a tri board. So, you know, one person from each town, that's three out of nine. So that's not breaking any open meeting law that's more consistent with, um, you know, kind of how bigger boards function in our town, for instance. Our, our town council is seven members, our, our um, pool committee is seven members. So they'll often have three member subcommittees. So I did, you know, like, so what, you know, since this is the first time that we're meeting and I'm not quite sure how often we should meet, what you're thinking as board members as to how often you want to see the other boards. Um, I think, you know, tonight was really cool because we we're able to really sort of highlight our public health nursing and inspectional services. Um, I just, you know, wondering if you had thoughts about how you want tie board, what, what you want in it what you want to hear, what you want to do, do we need, you know, is it a policy or is it a, you know, is, is it a policy making or is it um, an update meeting? I'm not, that's what I'm putting out there. Yeah, um, well, I think this, the Mosquito issue we mentioned about, <clears throat> obviously a lot of public health issues that are very common to all, all three towns. And so I think as much as we can try to, you know, um, pool resources, information, et cetera. Um, yeah, we should definitely do that. Um, you know, it, should we do it how often? Um, I think the person who kind of has the most run of all three and is most familiar with the answer, so I think yeah. you probably would have to say, well, rather than having the every year say the same thing at three different meetings, right. this is one area where right. we can say, exactly. let's all get together and talk about this. Um, yeah, we've talked about like common things like body work, yes, microblading, mm -hmm. you know, the common common themes of yeah. There's definitely a lot of like, like you guys said, there's a lot of shared topics that are of interest to all three of our communities. Um, I think it's difficult to answer the question about you know whether the boards will function as three independent boards or you know, they'll, they'll do a regional board. I think each town appreciates for the most part some autonomy in terms of you know the boards just you know because the boards know what's best for each town they know their residents they know the you know, people they, they work with live with so um, I think there's there's a piece of it where autonomy is important for each board um, I think there is a way that we could work together across uh, across towns and I think um, what we could do is we could have a standing like maybe twice a year standing twice a year, you know, all boards meeting, right? And then if something in the interim comes up where it's like, we have a couple of shared topics that could be knocked out all at once, we could all have a great discussion about it. I think we'd be, be happy to do that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I would I mean, certainly once let us twice. know if you hear, um, I mean, I haven't gone to a, a mass municipal meeting and probably won't, or 
the, the, the public health um, body that, you know, has been so good at training people, but I, I think COVID, no one's been. Oh, uh, MAHP. Yeah. Yeah, so the Massachusetts Association of Health. Oh, yeah, do they still do that every year? They, like the we haven't gotten any announcements for quite some time, so I think it's kind of gone yeah, underground. They used to do the thing in Taunton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gone. It's um, oh, yeah. Really? The last one was in November. I taught yeah. the last class that day. Yeah, yeah, it was so, Cheryl, yeah. but the woman that ran it retired that year. She yeah. retired in oh, November. I know. You're yeah, about we that. taught the um the last public health um, okay. um piece of it that year, and then they disbanded only because of. She was retiring. There was nobody else to take over, but Cheryl was going to try to do it. But then, sure. you know what came down the pike, so that kind yeah. of did it. Um, but so Cheryl funny. is coming um, in November to our chapter, um, our Health Nurse chapter, to speak to us. And I, that was one thing on the agenda that I asked to speak to her about yeah. because yeah. I feel that in being with them and Sandy and Tom. Um, Melissa are both with us, and you'll be coming on to our public health mm -hmm. nurse. Mm -hmm. We talk about out in the western part of the state having um, two or three health departments with one health director. Regionalization is already out there, and it's been there for a while. But they all like to keep their separate boards, and I agree with them in listening to them because what goes on over here may not be good for this one. But sometimes you have to get together and agree because otherwise you're just going to go down the street or go in the backyard and you're going to be in that next city or town. And regionalization is going to be the thing. I'm sorry. It, it's coming down the pipe even more. And now, as we know, um, there's talk coming down to do the qualifications and certifications of all health departments. DPH is working on that. And one of the big ones will be us now, public health nurses. <coughs> what the qualification will be for us and what our jobs will be. So this is going to be a big thing. We're hoping that um, every city in town has a full uh, public health nurse. That's my goal. I I've already spoken on that. But um, it's coming down the line and they're not only looking at us for nursing to do qualifications. They're going to take health departments and this is, this is going for legislature. And um, it's been going on for a long time. So don't be surprised when you hear it. We're fighting public health nurses fighting for a lot more for our health departments. We know what it's like. We've seen what happened. We've been prepared, done shelter training, been mm -hmm. there, done that. Sat with regional, I sat with group on a drill. We did a fake drill. Um, I've done four fake drills myself with DPH. And I had um, the privilege and the honor of sitting with the CDC flew into Atlanta to review my health department when um, Everett was putting the um, casino in. Oh. I volunteered. I said it was okay. Yeah, okay, I'll do it. It was the greatest thing in the world. And to see them, how regionalization, what we have here, Massachusetts is one of the only states in the country that public health is just un disorganized, as they said from the CDC. They could not understand that. Well, they came into a health department where I was the director in the nursing supervisor for the school nurses, and they had a public health nurse and one clerk. And they kept on looking at me, well, who does this? And I go, oh, I think I'm Mr. Permits. Yeah, when I work in that, I always do what's wrong with that. And they're like, but, but, but we don't understand well, how you can do that. Functioning. So visualization is big across the country, and it's now just starting. And it's going to come up. It, and and that be being said, we've grown from, you know, each mm -hmm. one of us having a department of two or three personnel yeah. in, the, in the past 10 years to, I don't know, a lot to come. Um, so I think... As that happens, it's on, you know, the boards have to sort of keep up with that and, and sort of figure out, you know, what is what is this supposed to look like? How do, you know, we have to get back to this, you know, original um, thought about, huh, you know, what are, what are we relating to the public? Um, and that's kind of, you know, we're kind of the in-between, we're the ones who are supposed to be listening to constituents as much as people are great and our departments are fabulous. In, in, in their front facing human service and, and, you know, fabulously respected as a resource, but it's, you know, on board members to think a little bit beyond that. Um, if we have, you know, if we're so pressed to do so. So I just, I don't know what the answer is. I'm just, I'm asking. I think to keep, a board in each, because as you know, the state regulations, the city, you have to have a doctor, town, you don't. Right. So there's different right yeah, there. So we double up on, we <laughs> up on nurses yeah. instead. Yeah, 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 we do. Well, legal, I mean, 
we had lawyers for years um, mm -hmm. in, in doing that, and now we have all nurses. And I really truly believe that we should keep all cities and towns should have their own individual boards so that they can represent their community. But that when you start combining, then you have to start meeting more and agreeing more on things and adopting of much larger policies and that are that that will work for all communities. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, regionalization idea with tobacco generation is a great example. Yeah. You, know, you can't just right. do it in little pockets here and there, and then that won't work. Um, again, pooling resources when it comes to like, okay, we'd like to have the state go out and talk to us about this or that, or address this or that issue for us. It makes a lot of sense that way, but at the same time, I think what no is probably is going away from we like to know, like, this is our board, this is where we are. And that, that is a Massachusetts thing where we're all very parochial, not too long, but we all, each city had their own little hospital. Yeah. So the rest, yeah, I've seen the same thing when I live in Pennsylvania. They have townships, which is like, yeah. you know, yeah. regionalization. It seems to be the norm, right? The exception. Sorry. Uh, it's good to have something like this because from time to time, the Commonwealth, God bless them, they drop a bomb on us. And Dr. Dean can attest to this. We've had to scramble to try and write regulations to meet what the town wants as an individual town. So we have to have a group like this where we can all just be, a, you know, come down to a, uh, a consensus of what's good and we'll put all our knowledge together and make it a lot easier for the uh, the town. Like, I'm sure Dr. Dean has a couple of gray hairs over some body works or something. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, and I, I love the idea of tabletop exercise because, mm -hmm. you know, I live in them, but I have a piece of my property that's in Wakefield. Yeah. So I mean, like, if something happens here versus where you're gonna go, there, that's the better plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's kind of like you know, we talk about civil service and fire departments, like mutual aid, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you know, when something happens and it's taxing the resources of each of us individually, we're much greater, right, as a response um, when we're united. And I just think in terms of where public health is right now and what the future holds, you know, I think of blueprint, right? And what everyone's supposed to be doing, but you look at the resources that each town has individually. And, you know, it's it's challenging. It's hard too, because in the Office of Emergency Planning, when we first started, I came from um, four and we were four A and there was four B and we combined into four AB, which was 30 something communities. And we had mutual agreement. We used to go get called from Everett. We would go to Situate every time it flooded. That's where we went to Weymouth. I still work with the Weymouth people because that's where I, I came from. That was um, that was our thing. So I've not worked much with this part, but I did sit in on one of the table talks um, with um, with this region once with Wakefield, and it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think things like that are just important because, you know, um, we had a family last year that was homeless that just arrived in one of our gas stations in, in a trailer and said, I have no money, I'm sick, what do we do? And it was just, you know, like, what are the resources locally and what should we be doing? And what is the best plan and what can we offer? And so when you have different resources available, you know, you're able to do that. So tabletop exercises again in preparedness for anything that we can think of is is a great way to put our strengths together i agree that there are a lot of things we could probably optimize together problem solving things like that without not still serving our town in a very you know you know uh, customer specific way um but doesn't preclude our you know collaborating so i think just looking for opportunities to collaborate might be the way to start. Um, you know, just little things like we have now just a brand new resource in our town, Lola's Closet, where anytime somebody needs something, you, we sort of go to action and within two or three days, we have like baby clothes and diapers and whatever. So something like that, you know, we just, we'd like for other towns to know about that because you probably have something that you could put into action. If we had any touch, just think by knowing each other and knowing what the resources are, those are just some obvious benefits too in addition to like writing regulations that we are all gonna pretty much agree on rather than all separately writing them, right? So efficiencies and problem solving opportunities. 
but yeah, separate boards and separate sort of like as far as the as far as the town knows, you know, we're here for them and, and all of that. And, yeah. So. so I think it's interesting. I think that's exactly right. Where we you know we have our constituents, yeah. but we have each other to do the problem solving. Mm -hmm. So you know who has who has a strength and you know what I mean it's pretty funny because we have hardly any septic either in Melrose or, or Wakefield, I don't know about Stoner, but you know, I do just go to North Riding and go, all right, you got to better, you know, yeah, no, like, yeah, yeah. Not, you know, as, as you know, so it's, um, I think just the way you said it is, is perfect in that as boards, you know, much as the MAHB had, had been kind of just like an out there best practices. Um, I, I think we've risen to not showing it up at all to people are looking at us for, for leadership. Um, and sometimes we make it up. Sometimes, you know, but it, using our, our best resources and the offering of resources has really evolved. We didn't used to have an emergency director who was able to kind of go between police, fire, health, and water and, and energy. And that, you know, so it's so jobs just keep sort of changing and evolving. Um, and I, I think we could be each other's resource in that regard. Well, we also do, like as with the inspectors, whenever we have something new that comes up that I'm like, oh, you know, Michael and Thomas have only been here a year. They probably don't know about this. I'll make sure to like send it out to the group. Like we had our first fever issue last week in Wakefield. And Dan was like, this oh, all no, 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 And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's for us. Yeah, it's for oh. us. So. And it's something that probably oh, nice. isn't an issue in Melrose, maybe some once in a while, but yeah, this is a beaver yeah. issue. So, yeah, it's very much what board of health. The I know oh, you don't ask about the beaver. <laughs> 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 you don't want to know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you were leaving the project. Yes, yes. the live and kicking. We don't know where it is. The water is too high. The water is too high. So, yeah. it's still out there. so I'm wondering what happened in the last five years because I switched over from emergency management. My master's is in healthcare emergency oh. management. Yeah. And I sat on the region committee and worked with all those people yeah. and did all those drills up in every hospital in the state drilling. And um, and we were part of the CHEMPAC planning and all the policy and procedure development, the decontam and mass sheltering and all that stuff came from the group I was with. Um, and it was a relatively large group. So yeah, we divided up in regions and within those regions, when we did a drill with the hospitals, everybody was invited, the mayors, the all the men selectmen of the towns, the boards of health, the expectation was that they show up at the table for those drills. And they pretty much did. Actually, Melrose was the crowning glory because they had Ed. Yeah. And, you know, and he worked a lot with the state and we sat on all these state and then federal committees as well. So it was a big, because there was a lot of money at the time. That's what the difference was. After 9-11, the money poured in, all these jobs were created. And as things got back to the norm, everybody went on their merry way because no longer was the federal government shoving money at you. I mean, I was in, you know, master's in nursing. I was working at Hallmark Health then and had been the emergency management director for decades and switched my degree over into emergency management because all of a sudden the federal government was throwing millions of dollars at us. And I had no idea what I was doing, you know, but yet I had to report out to DPH all the time. They sent down these rules. We're giving you this money and this is what we want you to do with it, but you have to figure out how to develop it. So I sat with Ruth Clay and, you know, um, the, the chief of the police and the chief of the fire department and the mayor and everybody else. And we worked out and that's how we developed these close relationships that these relationships are so important. You can decide what you want to do as a board of health. But you have to decide who that impacts and who else has to respond. Police has to be included. Fire has to be included. Your hospital. If you're sheltering people and they need health care, you have to include a representative from your hospital. If you want, you don't have to, but if you want it to work like clockwork, which we had it running like that for a very long time, um, we were people were envious of our community because we had the cooperation everybody we knew, but I went to high school with the chief of police and I'm married to the emergency <laughs> management director. And, uh, you know, we had all these little private relationships. So what we need is something. I remember when, you know, the funny story is they had at Nairo at Costco's or something one day and 10 o'clock in the morning, a phone call comes in 
it goes out, they pull the main water line out at the end of the, uh, where we get our water from, where the heck what? And, the and he goes, I'm looking at a, you know, 10 foot hole and it's blowing water all over the place. You guys are gonna have the water shut off and they're gonna make an announcement on the 12 o'clock news. Yeah. <laughs> now this is 10 o'clock, it looks at me and he goes, uh-oh. And he goes, how much potable water does the hospital have? And I said, I don't know. So I get, we're both in Steven and Costco's and we're both on the phone, you know, running back and forth saying we're gonna lose our water, this and that. So I initiated our materials management. We got our shipment from Belmont Springs, you know, made all these arrangements ahead of time that nobody knew about yet because it hadn't been out on the news. But just through our private connections, I called Ruth, we called everybody, public works and everything she took care of, of what we had to do. And now I'm sitting at my son's soccer game out in the field at the high school. And we see the Belmont Strings truck go by with everybody in there rationing water. I look at it and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so we had everything done. So that's you know, the, the short story about your community connections and making sure that you include everybody. And some people will blow you off. I mean, some of these drills, people didn't bother to show up until something really happened and then they needed you. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm wondering why we had all those reps. Part of it is because the job roles did change. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is they went and regionalization got a little bit more wiggy. And, you know, I sat with the always men in Wakefield up at the um, their public service building there with uh, police and fire and EMS and a bunch of other businesses mm -hmm. as well were there at the table. We had a great group. Yeah. 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 So that was that was that was us. Mr. Region, region. Yeah, yeah, LEPC. So I sat yeah. on that. And um there was a bunch of other things. So I'm not quite sure what the difference is now or, right. or where they lost it. But for a while there, it was humming like a well-oiled machine. It was and those policies still exist. It does. It, it, and what was the greatest thing about those meetings was, um, I used to love it. I come in from Everett and I'd sit with all the Wakefield people and, you know, we'd chit chat and you'd find out. But I think a lot, what happened was the money and the funding. And when they started putting the emergency management, they put a strain on, do you remember Rick Tesson from Winchester? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, they, they did tremendous. But what you learned was not only... Your emergency isn't just a health emergency. It might just be a fire. It could be that chemical. Thanks, everybody. And, and all of a sudden you're going, oh my God, I didn't think about that chemical. Like we had to take a fire exactly. whenever, when everything caught on fire that time. Mm -hmm. And that was chemical. That was people out of houses. And it was ridiculous. And you, if you don't remember that, but when all that, and then when COVID came in, they pulled everything back and they pulled the resources the wrong way and they're not, they're not yeah. coming back the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what it is, and I think because this is this is the opportunity for DPH to push their regionalization. And I hope that if they do that, that they do start to find the funding again and give it to these regional health departments like us um, right away and let us get our thing up because I think we have. Well, we are they doing the regional tabletop drills anymore though? Because no. you guys should be yeah. no more. Oh, those were so hard to do. They, they, were, they, were, they were Yeah, they were fun. They, 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 they actually had a discussion at the last um, yeah, they the want to go back. Yeah, 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 I do the LSAC meeting yeah. and we're basically trying to figure out because COVID happened and the plans were thrown out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's like what we're we're trying to go back on like doing like reviewing all the after action reports to see like where we're going to go from here. I think too, you know, I, it's so cool. It's just fascinating to hear, you know, and that's, that's where exciting. I think, well, exciting. I think that's, that's yeah. where, you know, the value of meeting us is we're going out. Yeah. You know, it's not to be better because I think we can sometimes stay in our lane. I will tell you that in the beginning of COVID, I implored every town counselor to do basic Incident command training that's available by FEMA. On. It was required. That oh, was yeah. required, even if for the school it's requirements yeah. to and do it. It was and not and required of them, and I don't know mm -hmm. how many. I mean, I I sent a letter to them individually for because because people wanted to help. I said, well, it would really be helpful if you just understood the chain of command. Yeah, that would be super helpful. And I think maybe it sounds like there's some energy about kind of revisiting this. It's kind of like you know post pandemic priorities um 
Maybe yeah, that's a lot of you know, people that knew how to do it now are retired or yeah, yeah, walking yeah. around or yeah, whatever. So that I still have your certificate. You know. <laughs> still oh, I had, had my books that, that big. Yeah. I had to take off. Don't lose that certificate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but again, so we make sure we have it as board members. Yeah. Every, you know, I was taught by Ruth, you know, every flu clinic was a practice drill. Right. And yeah, then, right. and then, or, you know, and then we had a pandemic. But it, but I felt like it, we sort of took over, right, as the agency mm -hmm. with police and fire supporting us. But I think that we need to kind of do an assessment of all the stakeholders and go, okay, you just know the basic rules. You just, just the basics. And if you don't know them, who are you going to ask? And who are you going to listen to? And who are you not going to supersede right. for the next kind of thing? Yeah, you do have yeah. to know the instant commit structure. You even yeah, know yeah. who to go with. Yeah, and, and what not to, to do. Like yeah. we, just, we had some outliers who were... But for boards, it's a lot of it's policy development. So I see the value of everybody meeting together on those general purpose things, because the policy is just a general set of guidelines. Right. And it's up to each of you as individual board members to take that big back and figure out what makes us different in Wakefield, what makes yeah. us different in Stonium. And then you add that as an addendum. You know, this is what we're going to do. But for here, or if oh, you have yeah. this, you branch down to what you define the differences. But the global policy itself, and the tenets of that are still universal, you know. Some, so sometimes what, it's operational, it's not. Well, operational. right, right, and it depends on in in what um, amount of participation that you have. But when it gets back to the board as a policy developing thing, and and then that still extends to the state who's up who's up above you that's going to mm -hmm. drive some of that. It's a DPH, but um, yeah, it's not easy. But that the framework exists and it works, and it worked then when you had enthusiastic people. The problem is bringing people back to the table just because it's the right thing to do. And sometimes if there's no money in it, nobody wants to talk to you. Anyway, this might be a sorry question. No, 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 no. Because I was, this, this brings me back now to everything that I did for decades. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, maybe we had a great thing going. I think deciding what the priorities are. But as a group, and if you're willing to work together, you're very influential. You've got friends in your town. You know who to go to. You have private relationships. You don't need the people outside of you, really. You just need your own your own tribe. And you could probably set the model for the state all over again. Is there anything else? Okay, I know I said thank you a lot tonight, but I want to say a special thank you to Nice, Rose, Christy, Cindy. Um, our admins work extremely hard. Um, you guys are um, jack of all trades. You guys get all sorts of questions all the time. You have to be an expert in basically everything. Um, so um, you guys interface with the public, make sure that everything is taken care of at the end of the day. Um, so thank you guys again for all of your all of your work. And now I'm back to Anthony for his leadership. I mean, you know, I've been doing this a while, and it's been such a breath of fresh air that he's come in and really just innovated so many things, um, really consolidated so many things. And the Wakefield um, family way really took care of that. That was just beautiful. Everybody has seen that. Um, do we want to decide now how often we want to meet as a tri board or let people mull that over? or? Um, And also, like I said, you would be the one I think to say, here's some you know, common issues to everybody, and let's have that the agenda for you for next week. Yeah. 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 We can talk about camps and pools out there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, do we want to we want to shoot for like May, maybe just May. yeah, we'll maybe do like a May meeting just because it'll be like right in the middle of camp season. Well, before farmers market. Before farmers market. Mosquito control. Mosquito control. Yeah. 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 Yeah.